Okay, let's just continue with the legs right now. I'm actually just gonna save a new version. I like to save often. <laughs> so over here we can again add a little cylinder. Hmm, actually gonna move it further over here. Cursor to select it. I'm gonna scale this guy up. Right over here. Again, gonna add a mirror modifier. Uh, over here, again, choose the center object as a mirror object. So that I can just scale this down and shear this into position. I also added a custom shortcut in my key map to actually be able to roll the view. So this is actually kind of useful. Uh, it's not as accessible. You really need to like go into the preferences and build it yourself. But I can like make a little mental note of sharing that. Right, and let's continue. So again, over here, we have a bunch of stuff. You can just share this. Yes. Just Alt E extrude along normals. Actually, wait, apply scale first. Otherwise it's not going to work that well. Alt E extrude along normals. There we go. And then we can just uh, bevel this and add a bunch of edges to it. There we go. And then we have the feet down here. So I'm again just going to uh, just gonna shear it and extrude it along the Y axis and then scale it down to zero along that same axis. Hmm. I'm just gonna scale it down, rotate it a bit, move it down. I'm gonna actually select these points, scale them down to zero so that we have a nice sole over here, like uh, the bottom side of the foot. Move this down, scale it a bit up. Nah, yeah, this might be good. I think I'm actually just gonna scale this guy up a bit more. There we go. Again, adding a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm just gonna make sure that this one is remaining sharp. And I'm actually going to bevel this guy. Hmm. I'm gonna figure this out another time. What to do with the little tip. Again, over here, I'm going to select these edges and also shift E one. Same thing over here, shift E one. Actually, I'm going to remove the face entirely. No reason to keep the shift E, just putting it back on minus one. I'm going to move this down a little bit, extrude it, scale it up. This would then connect back into the body. Actually, I'm, I might move the legs a bit further to the front since it's nice if they're a bit more centered with the, with the rest of the body. Or maybe not, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, let's just move them a little bit to the front. Move this up. There we go. Nice. 
I'm gonna keep this a bit sharp though. There we go. I'm gonna shade this smooth. We can do the same thing over here again. Anything above 30 degrees will be sharp. Same thing here. Shade smooth on these guys. Auto smooth enabled. Cool. Uh, I can just basically duplicate <laughs> duplicate the, the legs to make the arms because it's essentially the same setup. I just need to, uh, yeah, essentially get rid of those guys. I'm actually not gonna bother right now to model him into a T pose or an A pose. I'm just going to model him based on to, uh, based on the concept art. Just trying to get the design right. There we go. And then I can select this edge again and just extrude out another lower arm and hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna grid fill this in again, but in a way that it's actually aligned nicely. So let's bring back this panel over here and just rotate it slightly. Hmm. I guess there's no way of perfectly aligning it. Not with this amount of edges. Hmm. I'm actually going to use the smooth tool right now to just smooth this out. There we go. A little weird implied little shape of a hand. Hmm. Yes. And then the hand needs to be definitely wider. I'm actually going to select all of that. Scale it along the Y. Same thing for the wrist over here. And then of course the same thing for the lower arm. We're gonna change this to normal. That way the axis is going to be aligned with my selection. Which not always which doesn't always work that well. Mm, yeah. Going to start to extrude the thumb. I 
actually going to add another loop over here. This way I can select this and with the loop tools I can make it a circle. Yes. There we go. Nice round thumb. Since I only want to work on the hand right now, I can clip the viewport with Alt-B. This way I'm only going to see anything in the region that I just clipped. Because I want to slide this bit in. This then as well. Yeah, this a bit back. Nice. Add another loop over here. From time to time, I still really like to go into sculpt mode instead of just sticking with edit mode all the time. Okay, apply scale. Because just the ability to move things around with a brush-like to tool is really nice and intuitive. Okay, just gonna add some more loops over here. With Alt S scaling them a little bit along the normal to, to make them a bit more fat. And then I'm just gonna decrease the smooth brush size. By the way, I also added a shortcut to enabling the wireframe overlay, which is super useful. Uh, for me, it's just Shift Z. So I had to disable some existing shortcuts, but that's fine. There's enough room to play with in the in the key map in Blender to just make your own shortcuts. If you're sculpting a low poly model, I can also really recommend to turn down the brush strength in general, because otherwise it's just kind of, it's just really quickly getting out of control. Here we go. Nice smooth shape. Of course, the thumb is still kind of lodged into the rest of the hand, but I'm not going to bother too much about that right now. Okay, I'm gonna add another loop over here. I'm gonna close off the hand from the wrist with the subdivision surface modifier. Okay, beveling this guy. I should really disable the smoothing for edit mode. Let's hide that guy again. Yes. There we go. Oh. <laughs> okay, something got a bit misaligned. Oh, it's because I'm using normal or the or normal axes instead of global or local. Yeah, that one is a bit hard to control sometimes. Okay, cool. So we got somewhat of a body now. The, the suitcase is still very strange, but 
I'll just leave it like this for now. Okay, so what's the next element? We got a belt over here. So this actually should be easy to do. We can just duplicate this part of the body, separate selection with P, and then just with Alt S scale it along the normals and add an extra solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Oops, not that slider. There we go. Just to see it better, I'm just gonna disable the subdivision surface modifier. There we go. And to keep this from smoothing, we can just Alt select the boundaries over here and Shift E and one, and it's going to remain sharp. Nice. But in the concept, we can see that the belt is super straight. So we want to have this, of course, as well. I'm gonna shear. Okay, actually scale it down on along the Z axis. Move it up. And I'm just gonna dissolve this edge. Add a new one. Hmm, actually it's thicker than I thought. Uh, apply the scale, very important. This will also inform how thick the solidify modifier is actually getting. So yeah, he actually does have a pretty thick body over here. Hmm, I could go into uh, sculpt mode. Just drag it a bit further. Hmm. Okay. If you want to see the modifiers in sculpt mode, I can recommend you to disable this option, use deform only. Use deform only basically means it's only going to show you the mesh that is used for deformations like essentially what you see in edit mode. Okay, we can add a bit of thickness to this guy. We can still disable the modifier. If you want to just move around the, like nudge around the vertices without changing really there, like changing the the shape of the object. You can use the topology tool, but I can actually recommend to increase the stroke distancing. Completely forgot. I don't have a mirror modifier on this thing. Ah, okay. That's something to add. Move one side, delete faces, and add a mirror modifier. Uh, at best above the subdivision surface modifier otherwise because if you if you have the subdivision surface modifier on first it's going to smooth everything but it might it's going to create a hard edge at the middle point because it's not mirrored yet and then it's going to mirror it afterwards it might not merge these points even so i can generally recommend to put the mirror modifier on top and then again with clipping enabled, just make sure it clips into the center plane. There we go. Also, if you want to see the modifiers, but you still want to see like some sort of representation of the original geometry, there's this little grab active vertex option and it's going to draw the wireframes on top. It's still like, it, it looks a bit buggy it doesn't look like um like the what it's supposed to be eventually i think this could still use some improvements but it's a it's a nice little helpful indicator especially since the wireframes are usually smooth with the subdivision surface modifier so having the non subdivided wireframes here is really useful So yes, uh, we were working on the belt. I'm actually not going to use the solidify because, or actually, 
Let's bring it back. Is there a way of... No. There's no way of constraining it to a certain axis. So let's just get rid of it and instead extrude it ourselves along normal. This is essentially the same result as before. You can also scale it further along normal with Alt S. And then in edit mode, again, scale these loops down to zero and align them with the belt. That's nice. I just realized that this sort of commentary that I'm doing is really leaning towards almost a tutorial. So if you want, you can even just grab the concept art and just repeat what I'm doing here. Just like follow along. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Since everything is CC uh, Creative Commons, there should be no legal conflict of using the, the concept art for your own stuff. So you're free to do this. It's all free. Again, I'm going to use the mirror modifier. Delete faces, mirror, and above the subdivision surface modifier, enable clipping. There we go. Now I can adjust this further without problems. Ha. Huh. There we go. Hmm. I can see the belt definitely being maybe a bit of a problematic element because it's really starting to intersect into the arms would be nice if it's if it's just this additional little element that doesn't add a lot of thickness i'm actually gonna remove the center loop right now Anyway, uh, we can just keep this for now. Interesting. Ah, I think I forgot to do something with the reference empties, which is, yes, this is the, the, the depth options is not just for, for how different empties interact with each other, but also how it interacts with the objects that you're modeling on. So I can really recommend to put it in the back. This way, the objects are always going to be rendered in front of these empties. So this is really a nice note. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna select these two guys and uh, set the cursor to select it. That's why we have them here in the center plane. And I'm actually just going to make a dummy head. I can bring in the reference again uh, over here. Yes. So if we look at this little part of the turntable, we can see there is still a head inside and it's nice to add it, even though uh, the goal is really to hide it, to never show this head. It's still good to have these objects as a sort of volume reference. Otherwise, you're just kind of modeling in the dark. And at some point, like if you would have a body under the clothing and the clothing is like moving in some sort of dynamic way and the clo the body would never be shown, you would still want to have the body there. Otherwise, the clothes could just at some point intersect into the body and there's no volume consistency and it's just a mess. Okay, again, I'm going to remove one side and add a mirror modifier. If you want, you can even just select another object as the active one, control L and copy the modifiers over. With the copy attributes add-on, you can also do it with control C. So I can just go over here, 
This has not modifier modifiers, this one has modifiers. This one has even more, so I could go over here, select this one, then the arms, control C, sele copy selected modifiers, and then I can copy over the ones I want to have. So I could just, just copy the mirror modifier instead of all of them. So just going to copy the mirror. Now we have clipping, <laughs> still disabled, okay. Um, but yes, clipping and the mirror center object and all that stuff, then we just have it automatically. I'm just gonna bevel this again, this too, and this, I'm gonna bevel like that. Yeah, and this is just sort of the head shape, like a very generalized head shape that we want to have inside of this mask. I'm gonna select these edges and move them in. And I can just select all of this, move it out, and just smooth this flat, uh, sh uh, shape this smooth. <laughs> Okay, so the mask is definitely going to have a little element over here. So I can just duplicate it and extrude it in this direction. I'm going to disable the smooth modifier for edit mode again. I'm just going to separate this into its own object. Move it up. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually going, going to just get rid of the solidify modifier. Don't really like that one right now. So, this can be just a flat thing. I mean, it would be nice if it has a bit of the curvature of the mask. I can move it in. Definitely let it intersect a little bit. Huh. Okay, cool. Now I could just extrude this along normals. Now we have this little thing over here. Also gonna add these to the edge creases just so we can keep them sharp as well. Also shade smooth. Auto smooth is already enabled. That's nice. <laughs> 